what's in the box? Hey, what's going on? Jay here with Out of Space Games. Today we're going to be unboxing March of the Ants from Weird City Games, designed by Ryan Swisher and Tim Eisner. This is a strategic area control game with a ant theme, clearly, for one to five players. I believe there's also a cooperative variant recommended for ages 13 plus, and I guess it plays in an hour to an hour and a half. Take a quick look at the box here. You see some of the cool artwork. Um, just various ants. You see some small ones, I guess medium size, and some huge red ants as well. What I know about the game, um, there's an evolution phase. I guess it says right on here, explore, evolve, and emerge victorious. So you gather resources, evolve your ants, and try to be the biggest, baddest colony that exists in the meadow. Um, not much information on the side, it's basically a repeat of the company logo and the name and other descriptors. Moving on to the back here, you can see kind of a component breakdown. You have the game works um, with area management, so you'll have hex tiles that kind of flip over that people compete for, where you can gather resources, food, and battle other people for territory. Seems like there's a main, they call it the Great Tunnel Hex, where all the action revolves around and allows you to move from place to place. Every player also has a player board with room for your evolutions. So the, ga the game primarily exists or is played through cards, tokens, um, and it looks like some markers to mark things out, including cubes and a player track. Here is a list of all the components. So seems like a hefty box has some good weight to it, but it's not too big, which I guess is a nice thing too. But I guess let's crack it open and take a look inside. <clears throat> so here we can see nice large rule book uh, fills the whole entire box. Again, with this cool illustration style, it's almost like this watercolor, you know, soft pastel look. Um, nice large printing of the rule book inside. Very clear and easy to read. It does look like there's a lot of text, but there's also a lot of descriptions and examples of probably gameplay and how everything is laid out. I haven't read through it since the Kickstarter. I should mention that this is a Kickstarter project that I backed. But you can see yeah, tons of illustrations. Hopefully uh, it's easy to navigate. It seems like it should be. They kind of dis describe the various mutations and evolutions that your ants can go through. And it looks like a list of all the cards, evolution cards, event cards, colony goals. So. I'm not sure if it's uh, frequently asked questions or explanations or it's just more of a description of what it is. And on the back, finally, you have a quick reference for various things that happen, including an icon key, probably, to help you navigate the various diagrams. So, a nice, uh, hefty-looking rule book, I suppose. 19 or 20 pages, it looks like. We'll set that off to the side. <coughs> Next, it looks like we have how you score. So this is, uh, it looks like colony points. So throughout the game, you'll earn colony points during play for battling, um, collecting certain things, or evolving ants. During a slumber phase, which happens at the end of the turn, you gain certain points. And at the end of the game, if you meet certain requirements, for instance, Greatest store, so the player with the most food earns three colony points. Largest brood with the most larva earns three. Or the player with the most remaining cards in their hand. So this is how you score throughout the game and at the end of the game, determining the winner on the back of these cards. And there's five, enough for each player. On the back, uh, kind of details how ant battles go. 
the battle isn't the main focus of the game. However, we know ants like to fight each other and battling makes things interactive. So this kind of details uh, how you go through the battle process and how to resolve that. Here we, we find the, the player tracker, I suppose you used to say. So these are the number of points, um, colony points that you earn. So it's not a secret how many you get each turn. Each player can clearly see how many the other player has. So this is probably good in, in terms of targeting the, the colony leader, I suppose. Um, maybe trying to shut down the person with the most power or knowing what you have to do if you should try to focus on earning colony points or whatnot. Next, it looks like we have the various player boards. So there are, these are double-sided. <clears throat> it looks like on this side, all the player boards are the same. So everyone starts with the same guess type with all the same advantages, the same amount of larvae and stuff. So it's kind of laid out pretty cool, like an ant farm or something. Um, lets you know the, the phases. So this game goes through a worker phase, soldier, queen, and then slumber. And kind of details what you can do in each of those phases. Most of the stuff happens during the worker phase. This is where you make most of your decisions, play your cards perform your actions. Soldier phase is more or less the battle phase. And the queen phase is when you actually gather, I guess, gather the fruits of your efforts based on what you did earlier in the worker phase. So there's a place here for you to store your larva and store your food for easy counting. And I'm guessing you have to like pay a certain amount depending on the size of your colony. Here are three areas for evolving your ants. Ants evolve <clears throat> in the head area, in the thorax, and the abdomen. So what's cool about this is that your entire ant doesn't evolve at once. So you can have a mixture of, and it'll become more apparent as you look at the cards, that each ant can have very differing abilities based on which section of the ant has an evolved. So um, if you happen to get three of the same type of ant, I believe you get a bonus, but otherwise you have different abilities that pop up. So on the, on the back then, this is, this is known as a, I think the primitive side. And this is something completely different. So the primitive ant, Uh, different starting ants, I suppose. I'm not sure if it matches up to cards. I'll have to kind of look at that a little closer. And I believe this card is used for kind of a single player or a cooperative game. Because, um, so this is like the centipede symbol where you'll be fighting against kind of a deck that plays itself if I recall correctly. So, pretty cool. Uh, and how they've built it in to, I guess, the normal contents of it. So, But moving on, here we have the Great Tunnel. This is your starting hex, and you see the branching paths here that you can go towards. You can never fight in here. Uh, battles will take place at the other hexes and such. This is the current player marker. Um, I believe it was a Kickstarter exclusive somewhat. Or at least we unlocked it through the Kickstarter having the custom one with the artwork of the sun on it. You can see on the back there is a moon. This leaf is the round marker um, and it was also a custom shape ch chosen by the Kickstarter backers. 
looks like the great tunnel. Um, it changes based on the number of players. This side is for a one and two player game. So, and it has different rules and different descriptions of how things are placed like that. You can see the difference. Moving on, we have <clears throat> the various hexes. And also inserted on these chipboards are the centipede markers and the wormhole markers. You can see on the back, they have the same artwork. They'll kind of get shuffled together and you'll flip them over, not knowing exactly what comes up next. So, oops, popped out. Um, some of the things on the, on the tiles, I guess we can look at. So there'll be cubes that you can place down to kind of uh, stake your to territory and stuff. So probably an indication of how many larvae or food or various things you get here. It looks like you get two. And then it looks like a wormhole. Again, I'm not sure of all the game mechanics, so I can't speak to exactly how things work. But there's obviously a lot going on, and each location looks to be pretty unique. Or at least varied enough so that not every game is going to be the same depending on where the tiles are flipped over. I should mention very quick, some of the tiles in the back have a gold border. These are known as the starter tiles. When you start the game, you'll <clears throat> the beginning of your deck will start with two gold bordered hexes per player. So if you were playing with three players, you would start with six of these gold bordered ones on the top before you actually get into the rest of them. So I'm not sure if they're more, more simple or um, what the difference is quite yet. So after all the boards and the punch outs, we get to the actual cards. So here we have a nice baggie full of baggies for, looks like a multitude of components. So get into all the shaky stuff first. So these are all the, the cubes. I guess there's 180 cubes. These represent eggs, larvae, and ants um, of your particular colony. So each player has its own color. So there are 36 in each player color. Um, looks like red, yellow, black, blue, and purple. So each player will get a set of cubes matching their own color. And here we have the silicon gel. Keep it nice and dry. Here are the, the centimeeples. Oh, nice, okay. So I guess I misspoke a little earlier. I, I did point out the... So this is the player marker and the round marker. Um, the Kickstarter exclusive, I guess, is actually the cut ones, the wood cut ones. So here we have, you can see the current player marker, a uh, nice solid piece of wood, and the round marker in the shape of a leaf. The rest of these, I guess they call them centimeeples to represent the centipedes. They are also Kickstarter exclusive in this box. Um, I didn't notice anything on the box that says Kickstarter, but we were informed that the retail versions won't include these particular components. Another Kickstarter exclusive. So here's some of the cards. The card back kind of have the sun and design. Again, with this watercolor kind of pastel look. Um, but these blank cards were included as a special bonus for the Kickstarter backers to, for you to kind of uh, create your own colony goals. Um, you have different evolutions, so head, abdomen, and thorax. These are mislabeled. They're supposed to say event cards uh, with the red border, but I think we get the idea. So as you play more, you want to create your own customized components in the game. It's your opportunity to do so. And like I said, I believe that was a Kickstarter exclusive. All right, looks like my cards started busting out of the shrink wrap here. Does not look like any are damaged. Um, I do notice there's a 
slight linen finish. I believe that was a Kickstarter goal that we unlocked. Ooh. This one seems to have a couple marks on it just from maybe being in the box or it was just a manufactured error. Um, I know you probably can't see that at all. But anyways, let's get to the, the cards. So your blue bordered cards are colony goals um, where you try to fulfill certain requirements and earn rewards or have certain things happen. <clears throat> Next we have evolution cards. These are green bordered. Uh, looks like they're separated by body parts, so these are all heads. So here's a trap jaw head, golden fire head, armored head, and each one has, these are probably the requirement for how much larva you need, maybe it's battle strength, and then you can notice there's a different text on each one because they give you different abilities as well. So. For instance, we'll just read from, oh, this is from a thorax, actually. But when you forward, you may draw one additional card. So, give you different abilities. So, yeah, it seems like lots of variation in gameplay. So these are all the, oh, and then we get to the abdomens. And finally, the thoraxes as well. And you may notice this Apis mellifera. That is actually a honeybee. And you may ask, why is a honeybee in an ant game? Or why does an ant evolve into a bee? This was kind of a mini expansion that the Kickstarter backers voted on. They had an option, I think, between like a beetle and a bee. Probably some other insect as well, but this is the first mini expansion <clears throat> where you can evolve uh, basically into a bee type creature. Alright, so now that we're through the, the various evolutions, and again, it seems like a whole bunch of them. You have the events, so I'm not sure when these are played, but does it look like there are many repeats? It looks like, at least judging from the quick glance to the artwork, that a lot of these are very unique to themselves, um, which probably adds, again, to just some very gameplay in different circumstances that come up, so I feel like that lends itself well to gameplay. Hopefully you'll still be able to build a strategy based on what events or goals or evolutions that come up, but it definitely seems like a lot of chance for variation. So <clears throat> The last couple components, just the player markers. Um, one in each of the colors, each of the five colors, if I can find the board. So to mark your colony points, these markers will go on there, outlining everyone's current points. And then finally, these brown wooden discs represent food tokens. So as you gather food, the food will go in the food storage and the other cubes that you have <clears throat> they'll go on your larva, and they'll also be placed on the various hexes to mark your territory as well. Just a final look inside the empty box. I guess it's a pretty standard divider. Um, it seems like it'll fit sleeved cards. I like to sleeve all my games, so we'll have to see how it all fits together when it's all sleeved up and nice and how everything will, will fit back in. A lot of people just toss these things away. Um, like I said, we'll see. One final comment, 
The chipboard is nice and thick. These are, it's some type of cardstock, but it's pretty thin. The cards, uh, a little bit thin as well. So hopefully it holds up to repeated gameplay. Some people I know like to laminate their boards, especially it's a thinner cardstock. So uh, we'll see kind of how it holds up. But the printing and everything is nice. The color is more subdued just as a result of the artwork, but things still pop out and look very good. So I'm definitely excited to play it. So be sure to check our channel for a play session slash overview slash review sometime soon. We'll try to get both a solo slash co-op game as well as a competitive game. So. Make sure you watch the other videos on our YouTube channel. We're also on Facebook and Twitter at Out of Space Games. And we have a podcast where we discuss Kickstarter news, gaming, and really a bit of game design as well as we continue working on our heist game. But that's also Out of Space, Out of Space Games podcast. But thank you for watching, and we'll see you soon.